Hook grip was first used in the sport of weightlifting where the lifters have two main movements, the clean and jerk and the snatch. In both of these movements, we move the barbell from the ground to an overhead position. The need for a double overhand grip in Olympic lifting is quite obvious. It's because of the speed of transition required in both the clean and jerk and the snatch positions. However, if the lifters didn't utilize a hook grip where you place your thumb underneath the barbell and then grab onto your own fingers, we would see the bar simply fall out of their hands at heavier loads. The hook grip is designed to lock the barbell into the hands in a double overhand position. I know the hook grip is a strong grip. Every world record and elite lifter has been using the hook grip for decades now in the sport of Olympic lifting. But is hook grip superior to mixed grip in the sport of powerlifting? I've seen a lot of young lifters come into the sport thinking that they need to contort their thumbs around the barbell in order to maximize their deadlift grip strength. This is most likely because they see their favorite lifters lifting heavy loads on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Only for these same young lifters to feel disappointed time and time again as they get to their top sets in their peaking phases and feel their thumbs slipping as the hook grip gives way and the bar rolls out and lands back on the floor without lockout. This is actually really common for a few reasons. The first is you can't use hook grip all year round with all of your sets in all of your sessions. And this is because unlike the mixed grip, the hook grip relies on the strength of the thumb skin. And if you do too much volume, pulling and tugging on the skin of your thumb, eventually it's going to tear and you won't be able to utilize this grip much longer. Lifters typically only use the hook grip for one to two top sets per session within the week of deadlifting. Very few people can get away with using the hook grip for majority of their training sets. And what this ultimately means is that you have less practice using the hook grip than if you were to compare that to other grips like a mixed grip where one hand is over and one hand is under. You can use that grip all year round without any implications. And these are the two main reasons why we don't push young lifters to use the hook grip, because we're reliant on the strength of the skin on their thumb, and then we don't get much practice throughout the training cycles at those top loads. We have to protect the thumb in order to use the hook grip. So I've been shitting all over the hook grip for the past couple of minutes. So you're probably thinking, well then what are the pros of the hook grip? And ultimately for some people, it will just be a stronger grip. And this will only be available to you if you were to try this grip for a number of training cycles. And we recommend you do that. However, if you're stuck thinking about your grip being the limiting factor for your deadlifts and it's stopping you from pushing your top sets and your volumes, this probably isn't the right answer for you. Another pro of the hook grip is for certain sumo lifters, particularly those with larger quads, will find that the double overhand position allows for more symmetry in the barbell's movement throughout the lift. Whereas if we had one hand under and one hand over, the underhand might disturb the bar's sort of line of pull within the deadlift as it rubs up the quad of that side. This is why you may see lifters like Bryce Krawcheck of Calgary Barbell lift with a hook grip in that sumo position. He's a larger man with larger legs and we're trying to make it as efficient as possible for that sort of technique. Apart from clout chasing, the other consideration for hook grip is that mixed grip in some way trains imbalances at the shoulders and the trunk because of the mixed grip on the barbell. However, this just isn't true. The human body by nature and design of evolution is asymmetrical. We have internal organs that are placed asymmetrically within the trunk, and we have a diaphragm that pulls and tensions on the rib cage in an asymmetrical way every single time we breathe. The central nervous system also recruits different muscles and patterns asymmetrically throughout the environmental asymmetries of life. The thought that using a symmetrical hook grip for a couple of sets per week is going to offset this asymmetrical body and life that we live is just incorrect we're not going to be able to out-train the asymmetries of the human body. This isn't to say that we should be utilizing programming strategies to improve weak points or weak muscle groups within our body. It just means that we can't have every decision in the gym impact our performance because we're chasing this gold standard of human symmetry. It's just not going to happen. Whilst I'm on the topic of imbalances and potential injury risk with mixed grip, it would be impartial of me to not talk about the risk 
risk of the bicep tear in the mixed grip. This is a common thought when transitioning or using the mixed grip. However, when we view all of the incidences of torn biceps in the deadlift because of the mixed grip, what we'll probably see is that the lifter is trying to yank or pull the bar with their arms and we see the elbow actually bend. And this bend in the elbow under load is what is actually tensioning the bicep where optimal deadlift technique is actually going to be lengthening the arms in the setup and locking the elbows into extension. This length in the arm allows us to better tension and leverage the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings and adductors to lift the loads. We wanna position our legs and utilize our legs more than the arms in the upper body. And if you're using a mixed grip deadlift with your arms long and lengthened, I can guarantee that you won't be tearing your bicep anytime soon. But what do I know? At best, I'm a mediocre retired powerlifter. So here's one of our strongest lifters and coaches, Charlie, who's pulled over 300 kilos in competition using the mixed and hook grip. So Charlie, why did you start hook grip? Uh, because I thought it was cool. So a lot of people like Bryce doing it, JP doing it. Probably when my, my identity was a little bit more wrapped in powerlifting, and I wanted to look cool on the Instagram. That was probably the main reason. What were your experiences with hook grip? It hurt, it sucked, and I dropped a lot of deadlifts. <laughs> and my confidence in the grip and rip aspect of deadlift was definitely going. The grip and rip was probably the biggest part of the deadlift that I was actually good at, like just getting in position and going, and hook grip definitely had an impact on that, and I lost confidence in being able to do that, and then couldn't lift as much weight. So what differences between both mixed and hook grip have you felt? So the biggest thing that I felt was that with hook grip, you would do your top set with hook grip, and then because you couldn't tolerate the volume, you do your volume with back off uh, with straps with back offset so there was this false sense of security i'm lifting big weights with my back off work but then that couldn't translate to my top set whereas with mixed grip i found i'm a mixed grip my top set mixed grip my back off work there's a very good correlation between my back off work and how that will translate to my top set the, the back off work and the training volume just wouldn't translate well to my to my single thank you charlie maybe we're wrong and unlike charlie you're in the one percent of lifters who will be stronger at the deadlift with a hook grip long term however if every time you deadlift, you have this all-consuming thought about your grip strength or your thumb skin, or even just simply holding onto the bar as the load gets heavier, maybe the juice isn't worth the squeeze and you should just stick with the mixed grip long-term. If you're a young powerlifter looking to succeed at the sport of powerlifting, you can use our world-class training app for free for an entire month using the code YouTube down in the first link down below.